So in today's video, I am going to discuss about how to revise a paper for a journal. So essentially at this point, I presume that you have submitted a paper to the journal. You have waited for a few months and at the end of the few months, you have received a response from the journal and the journal has suggested that you make a major revision to this paper. And after this revision, this paper will be again reconsidered for prospective publication. So again, the first thing you need to do at this point is to be very pleased that your paper has received such a result. Because as I have told you before, a large number of papers tend to get rejected by many journals. So if you have received a decision of a revision, then it's a very good result. The next point to consider is that though your paper has been selected for a major revision or a minor revision, you may find that the comments given by the referees are quite trenchant. And what I suggest is that you look at these comments dispassionately and wait for a couple of days before you start beginning to frame a response to these comments. So this lets you put a space between the stimulus and the response, and it helps you to put these comments in perspective. So most new researchers are very perturbed when they receive comments from referees because when they submitted the paper, they thought they had done a great piece of work. And when the referees comments come back, it seems that there are so many gaps and lacunas in their work and the referee seems to be very hostile to them. So again, this is not totally true. You have to put it in perspective. The referee is actually doing a good job if he or she has critiqued the paper very substantially. And the way science works is that referees are essentially the people who are the gatekeepers in science and therefore their comments are very valuable. And one should also remember that they are making these comments free of charge. So essentially they are volunteers. And so any comment you get from the referees is a positive sign. Now, what you need to do is you need to take a couple of days off and then look at the comments in a dispassionate manner. So I would suggest at this stage that you write down all these comments so you can copy and paste these comments into a Word document or a LaTeX document. And then you can split these comments into different files saying rep like referee one, referee two, referee three. And you can name these files as reply to referee one, reply to referee two, reply to referee three. And then let us take a look at one of these replies, say reply to referee one, then you should put the comments of the referee in quotes. So you can say referee one, and then put a colon and then put the comments made by the referee there at that point. Now below this particular comment, your reply will come. So you can split out this particular referee comments into a series of comments. So you can take each of those sentences or each of those paragraphs if they are focusing on a particular theme. And then below each of these paragraphs or sentences, you can frame a reply to each of these points. So Many journals will tell you to give a point by point reply to the referee comment. So this is what they mean at this point. Now, what I would suggest is that once you have done this, you need to start filling in the replies. So what you can do is you can do all the simple corrections first. So there may be a lot of questions in terms of typos you may have made or in terms of certain figure captions which need to be changed. You need to add certain references to the paper which you did not add previously. You need to add some kind of units to the tables which you may have missed out and so on. So these are all the possible situations in terms of typesetting of the document which has been pointed out to you by the referees and so you can make, make them without much problem. Now there may be some more serious comments on your paper in terms of validation, in terms of uh, the need to add certain diagrams, flowcharts, figures, or get certain new numerical results. So these things can take more time and you should certainly make sure that you address these particular comments by getting the new results by running your code or your simulation or performing new experiments and generating these results. Because if you don't do these things conscientiously, 
then what happens is that there is a possibility that if you have just addressed the minor comments in the reviews and not the major comments, then in the second round of revision of a review, your paper will be rejected by this particular referee. So again, I would say don't do this in a haste. Give yourself few weeks or even a month or two to address these comments. So many journals will tell you to submit a response by a month or two months. But in case you are stretched for time, you can ask the journal for more time. And many cases they will give you more time to do this particular revision. Now, when you re reply to the reviewers, I would say split it out in terms of reply to reviewer one, reply to reviewer two, reply to reviewer three and so on. So there are possible cases where you may get four or five re reviews also. In fact, in one case, a paper we submitted got as many as five reviews. So that is also possible. Now, once you have made all these changes to the revised paper and you have put in the new results in terms of validation, new graphs, new tables and so on, you can draft a reply to the referees. And in this reply, you should exactly mention where in the PDF file you have made the changes. So you can mention it in terms of page seven, paragraph three or the location in the journal where your changes have exactly been made. So again, this helps the referee to go to that particular point and check out as to what are your changes. So again, sometimes what people do is they can mark that particular page on the PDF file in yellow or some different color so that the people can see that and you can write this particular thing in your reply that the revisions made to the paper are shown in this particular color in the revised manuscript. So again, I mentioned before the page number and the locations of the changes should be explicitly mentioned. Now, if you have put in a new figure such as figure seven or table five or something like that, you can also put that in your reply that this particular figure and table has been put in. Same thing about new references. If you have put in some new references based on the comments of the referee, you can put it that reference 27 or 28 has been put in the revised paper. So again, these help the referee to look at your re revised paper and go through it quickly. And so you can expect a faster response from the journal in that case. Now, once you have done all these things, what I would suggest is you take a look at the response you have drafted to the referee com referee's comments. You take a look at the revised paper and you go through all these documents very thoroughly to make sure there are no spelling mistakes, there are no grammar mistakes and so on. And this is a chance for you to also go through your revised paper one last time so that there may be things which have not been pointed out by the referees, but you may discover during this process, which you can also fix at this time. So this is a time when you can fix any issues related to font size of figures or related to certain captions on tables and so on. So again, you can take a very thorough look at the manuscript at this point and try to improve it as much as possible. Now, once you have done all these things, you can submit your revision back to the journal website. And at this point, you can also write a cover letter to the journal where you mention that you have uh, looked at the revised paper. You are very grateful for the comments of the referees and you are now putting in the revised paper for final submission to the journal. So in this particular situation, you may also be asked to submit your final zipped LaTeX files, including figures and tables and so on, or your final Microsoft Word document. And you can do that at this stage. So this will ensure that if the journal decides to directly send your publication for typesetting and printing, then they will not have to come back to you once again, and they can go forward and do this particular task. Now, one more thing to remember is that if you receive a major revision comment from a journal, do not work extremely fast and submit this revision in three to four days. So sometimes new scholars do this because though you may have worked all nighters and done this work, the journal may feel that you have done a sloppy job and you have been 
somewhat careless in your work so again i would say take your time if they have given you a month take three weeks to do the whole thing very properly and then submit this work to the journal and this is because this kind of work requires a lot of meticulousness and fastidiousness and so you need to do this work slowly and very carefully and you need to make all the changes in a very proper manner so again in this situation haste makes waste and so i would suggest that don't rush into submitting the revised manuscript to the journal spend your time on this revision look at the amount of time they have given you and wait a week before the final deadline and then submit it at that point so that you give yourself time in case there are any problems with submission on the web page and so on so again i hope these comments were useful to you in terms of preparing a revision for a journal paper and at this point what the journal will do is that they will make a decision based on your comments so this is possible if the revisions are minor in nature and they do not require the expertise of the particular referee here the second situation which can happen is that they send it out to the referees again so in case the editor may decide to send it out to all the referees or he may decide to send it out to any one referee who has raised many of the main issues in the paper so sometimes there are situations where two referees have said the paper is excellent and a third referee has said i need a validation so again in that case they may only send it out to this third referee who needs a validation of this uh, results with some published literature or with some graphs and so on so again once this particular validation has been obtained and that referee says that yes this paper is fine with me then they will say that yeah you can uh, rest uh, fine that your paper has been accepted in the journal and then you will receive a final message from the journal that your paper has been processed through the journal and it is going to come in the final journal publication and at that point you can celebrate and have a nice uh, dinner out with your friends or by yourself to celebrate this particular positive situation so again i hope this view video was useful for you and again stay tuned to my channel for further videos on such topics thank you very much